The Sony 20mm f1.8G is often regarded as being one of the best wide-angle lenses currently available for Sony mirrorless cameras. But with the recent release of Sigma's updated 20mm f1.4 DGDN, is this new arrival able to knock Sony from the top spot? Well today, we're going to find out. Although I wouldn't consider the new Sigma lens big or heavy, the Sony in comparison is noticeably lighter and smaller. This is most likely due to the fact that it only has a maximum aperture of f1.8, whilst the Sigma can stretch its opening wider, so to speak, to a maximum f-stop of f1.4. As you'd kind of expect from both of these brands, both lenses are predominantly made from metal with a proper dust and splash proof construction complete with rubber o-ring around the lens mount. Although both lenses accept screw-on filters, some of you may have noticed that the Sigma lens includes a slot for rear mounted filters also whilst the Sony does not. In the way of features, both lenses include an MF to AF switch, a customizable AF lock button and a declickable manual aperture dial. Though the Sigma lens does go one step further by including a lock switch for this dial to prevent it from being knocked away from auto mode and there's also a manual focus lock switch which allows you to deactivate the manual focus dial to prevent you from accidentally shifting the focus while shooting. When shooting in manual focus mode, both of these lenses are silky smooth and responsive. The only noticeable difference really is that the Sony has a very short throw and very little resistance on the dial making it super sensitive to your adjustments, whilst the Sigma in comparison has a slightly longer throw and is less sensitive. But when it comes to handing out points, for me, both of these lenses clearly deserve a point for build as they're both really nicely made. However, when it comes to handling, the decision as to which lens you would go for will ultimately depend on your own personal preference. If you prefer your lenses to be as small and lightweight as possible, then the Sony is arguably the better choice. However, if you're into astrophotography or maybe landscapes, then the idea of having a manual focus lock switch is too good to pass up then the Sigma is probably the one for you. But for the sake of this test I'm just going to give both of these lenses a point for handling and then you could decide for yourself which option would benefit your own personal shooting style. In terms of price both of these lenses are very similarly priced in the US albeit the Sony is very slightly cheaper here in the UK. But as there's not much between these two lenses I'm just going to give both of them a point for price. When it comes to autofocus in good lighting conditions both lenses are absolutely rapid to focus with no signs of hunting at all. In low light conditions neither lens showed any signs of hunting and both lenses seem completely unfazed by the significant drop in light and continue to lock on quickly and accurately. When shooting wide open in continuous burst mode, almost all of the shots I took with these two lenses were sharp and in focus, so a pretty impressive performance across the board. This means it's points all round for AF in photo mode. Switching over to video mode and when tracking George as he walked towards the camera at a regular pace and while shooting wide open with these lenses, the Sony lens managed to track him with no problems at all. However, the new Sigma lens did appear to snap in and out of focus occasionally throughout the walk. Now when repeating this test at a faster pace it was kind of the same result. The Sigma struggled once again to keep locked on whilst the Sony showed no problems at all. However it is important to remember that this is a pre-production copy of the Sigma 20mm lens that I'm testing and when I mentioned this performance issue to Sigma UK they did reassure me that there is often a final firmware update before this lens is officially released so let's just hope this is something that's fixed. Okay so it's good news bad news time and let's start with the good news which is that both both of these lenses are almost completely silent when it comes to AF noise. The bad news is that both lenses do suffer from focus breathing. Though it is worth mentioning that if you own one of the newer Sony cameras like the Sony A7 Mark IV that I'm using then this Sony lens will be compatible with your camera's built-in focus breathing compensation setting so this will help combat the effect of focus breathing if it is something that really bothers you. The Sigma lens on the other hand, well you're out of luck. Focus breathing aside, when it comes to dishing out points in this round, I do have to judge these lenses based on their performance during the time of testing. So unfortunately for the Sigma, it means that the Sony is the clear winner and deserves the point in this round. In our Bokeh Balls test, although the orbs created by the Sigma are slightly larger due to its wider maximum aperture, the Bokeh Balls created by the Sony lens are perfectly spherical across the majority of the frame until they do start to misshape and towards the edges. The Sigma's orbs, on the other hand, have a prominent lemon shape to them across the entirety of the frame. 
In terms of general bokeh quality though, both of these lenses produce a lovely soft defocused area and it's really hard to find fault with either lens. So when it comes to scoring, I think it's fair to say that both of these lenses offer a really nice bokeh quality, so it kind of feels wrong to deny the Sigma a point just because of its lemon shaped orbs. So I am going to give both of these lenses a point in this round, but with the caveat that if you want the roundest looking bokeh balls, then the Sony is the better option. In our lens flare test, the Sigma actually does a better job of protecting against ghosting compared to the Sony. But like most lenses these days, both of these options come with lens hoods in the box, so you really shouldn't need to worry about lens flare ruining your shots. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, both of these lenses provide a very clean result, with only a touch of teal fringing at the top and practically no coloration at the bottom of the chart. When shooting out in the real world with these lenses, I was really hard pushed to pick a favourite, as both of these lenses are genuinely an absolute dream to shoot with. I've got to admit though, the biggest difference between these lenses is the size and weight difference. Not that I found that the Sigma uncomfortable to use or anything, but in comparison, you barely even notice the Sony is attached to your camera. They both feel super premium, and that quality is clearly reflected in the images that I came away with too, as I had so many sharp shots to choose from that I was really spoiled for choice. Now, 20 millimeters is obviously a super wide focal length to shoot with, so it's obvious that both of these lenses are gonna display a little bit of barrel distortion and some vignetting, especially when shooting wide open. But I have got to say that the Sigma did suffer from a heavy amount of barrel distortion compared to the Sony. However, this should be a one-click fix once the lens correction profiles are updated in Lightroom and Photoshop to include this new Sigma lens. When it comes to overall image quality though, both of these lenses are capable of producing beautiful looking images with bags of detail and clarity, even when shooting wide open. When shooting wide open at these lenses' respective maximum apertures, both lenses are almost identical when it comes to sharpness and contrast at the center of the chart. At the corners though, the Sony is the clear winner with excellent edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, even when shooting at f1.8. When shooting close up at the lens's minimum focusing distances, both lenses are very sharp with a good amount of contrast to boot. So when it comes to awarding points for image quality, it's another very close contest because these lenses are just so closely matched. Though, as we've seen from the test charts, the biggest difference between these two is the corner sharpness. The Sony is clearly the better option if you're looking to get edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, and therefore, in my opinion, that technically means that it offers the best optical performance and so deserves the winning point. However, it is worth mentioning that for most portrait photographers like myself, edge sharpness, particularly when shooting wide open at f1.4, really doesn't matter that much because your subject is usually in the center of the frame. So I do appreciate that not everyone will benefit from the additional edge to edge sharpness offered by the Sony. So as a consolation prize, I think it's only fair to award the Sigma half a point in this final round. But even with this consolation prize, it looks like the Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 G manages to keep hold of its crown and is still the best 20 millimeter lens available for Sony mirrorless cameras, mainly due to it being small, lightweight, with a lightning fast AF and impressive edge to edge sharpness, even when shooting wide open.